would you permit ground troops to fight in Iran and, and or ISIS? I, I, I'm not sure, they, meant, they said Iran, but uh, would you permit ground troops to fight Iran and, and or ISIS particularly, U.S. ground troops? So I would not commit ground troops, troops to Iran. I don't think that's really a part of the dialogue at the moment. We are seeing a much, uh, an equally troubling set of developments in our, with Iran though, and that is that we've just released, thanks to President Obama, $150 billion to the world's leading state sponsor of terror. That's a problem. That's gonna come home to roost. We're gonna have to start looking hard at what we're going to do there. That's more money in inflation-adjusted terms than what we gave to the countries of Western Europe to help them repair after World War II. We're now going to see major concerns in the, in the coming years here. We're going to develop, have to develop a long-term strategy for what we're doing with respect to Iran, Iran, and we're going to have to continue to monitor to the best of our ability, despite the fact that we're now hamstrung by this present deal, to make sure that we keep them in check. But I don't think it is going to require troops at the moment. Me, before we commit to ground troops, which I would not at this point commit, we need to come up with a plan, a plan for the Middle East of how we are going to address the chaos that is there at this point. Mr. Smith? I would well, let, me, let me go back and give you a period. One of the audience members asked, what does that mean? Back to you, Ms. Nehron. From the One of the audience members asked, what does your statement mean? Amplify. One of the audience members asked, just, just, just briefly, what does that mean? Give you a chance to amplify your statement. Well, to me, the fact that we have Russia now coming into Syria when we are fighting different people, I mean, there's chaos in the Middle East. And with ISIS and what they are doing and trying to expand, we, we, to me, we have to come up with a plan first before we're going to put ground troops anyway, because that's what we're doing now. We're pulling people out, putting people in. We've got to come up with a plan of how we're gonna, going to address the Middle East. I would take every opportunity to hunt ISIS down wherever they are and kill them. Uh, second of all, I think this administration has destroyed the credibility of this nation and our global partners. We need to bend those fences. And we need to find terrorists wherever they are and eliminate them. Because if we don't, they'll soon be coming back to the United States. So let's use every available resources we have. Well, so I, I, I know they're I know they're already here, but they're not in this room right now. So let's uh, let's see let's see if we can use every available resource that we have to uh, take these people out. My stepfather twenty five years was in World War II. It was a gruesome war. It was a different war from what we have today. But we have to learn how to fight those wars. We can't let politicians restrict how military responds to the threats of terrorism. Thank you. Thank you. Ground, ground troops, yes then, Mr. Smith? Just to their very specific question, ground troops, just yes or no, because they asked, would you commit ground troops as part of your, to fight ISIS? Exactly, I just okay. said, I will hunt them down wherever they are. I want to be clear. But we should never have left Iraq terrible blunder, and uh, U.S. policy has been a series of one half measure after another. And it's my experience in this world that half measures always fail. So would I commit ground troops now? Absolutely. We need to be decisive. We need to show people that we are a strong country that will not give ground and we need to be the defender of Israel. Amen. Amen. Because if we talk about destiny, the manifest destiny of the United States of America is to be the defender of Israel. You asked that question of Mr. Murphy and myself. His answer was clear. We ought to let us see how it plays out. Because at the time, I was still the junior varsity. As a military person, I am very reluctant to put boots on the ground. But I answered that today. We should put boots on the ground. Does that mean hundreds of thousands of troops? Absolutely not. An example, we are fly, flying bombing air sorties in Syria. 90% of them come back without dropping a bomb. Why? We have no forward observers or intelligence on the ground to tell these pilots where to drop the bombs. If 
He's a medical doctor, and I'm sure a medical doctor tell you, if you catch, the earlier you catch cancer, the more you're not going to have to deal with it. We should have started, but I absolutely would have put boots on the ground. Carl, I'm going to have to respectfully disagree with you, because if we're sending fighters in anywhere to drop orbits on some piece of ground, you can absolutely believe that my friends in special operations are somewhere out there hiding in the bush lazing that target, putting eyes on wherever we're going to drop that piece of ordnance. So the premise of this is should we put boots on the ground to the false premise? They're all ready to go. Now, the boots on the ground that I would like to see put in place to combat ISIS are these boots. I believe it should be the refugees that are seeking shelter in other countries. Because I can, I can say this, historically speaking, no country was ever made great by running away. Not the United States of America, not Israel, not any other country out there. So those refugees should be taking up arms, being trained by their government, and combating ISIS. And the reason that I can say that without being as cold or heartless is because if ISIS was cutting a swath across the United States of America, then every one of us would be out there with our wives, with our children, defending our country until our last breath or the last breath of every ISIS. Amen. Let's go to ISIS.